guys, welcome back to my channel. Kelsey here for my second video. I'm actually really happy because my first video, you know, got a much better reception than I thought it would. There were a lot of comments and likes and, and views and it just, um, it's nice to know that people are watching. Thank you to everybody who watched and liked and commented and even subscribed to me. It was a great positive reinforcement to keep going and keep doing this because it's it's been, I guess, a dream of mine for a while. So it was nerve wracking to get that first video out there, but I did it and like I said, the response was great reinforcement. So I'm gonna keep doing it. You're stuck with me for a while, I guess. I just want to shift gears on my second video and I want to make this video I guess more lighthearted and fun because my first video it was pretty serious. I love to make people laugh. You know I consider myself you know a pretty funny girl. Everybody considers themselves hilarious let's be honest here. I, I like to put a smile on people's faces so this one is going to be like I said, just more fun, more lighthearted, you know, not such a serious topic. So today what I want to talk about is having a crush and women in particular, how I guess obsessed and crazy we can get when we have a crush. It doesn't matter who you are, I feel like you've had this experience before where you've had a crush. I'm not going to lie, I myself have had a pretty sorted stalking past. <laughs> Nothing like crazy, like don't call the authorities, like, I wasn't in prison, but like I've had pretty intense crushes and I've, I've found myself doing pretty questionable things and I've found myself in situations where, you know, I take a step back and look at my life and I'm like, how the hell did I get to this point? I'm in my 20s and on the internet and admitting these things and I'm just like, what am I doing? But you know what? We're gonna go for it. I just wanna start off by saying crushes are called crushes for a reason because most of the time, more often than not, when you have a crush on somebody, it crushes you because they don't notice you or they don't like you back or you're invisible. So I think that's why it's called a crush because it, it gets sad after a while, you know, and you, you still, you cling on to that hope even if they're not noticing you. As time goes on, it gets harder and harder. I think I'm going to tell you guys about one of my first experiences with a really bad crush. I was in high school and I was... <laughs> It was grade nine, you know, I was 14 years old. I feel like high school is the time when you get all your embarrassing moments out there, you know, you, you do questionable shit. You're confused at life and, and who you are as a person and, you know, proper social protocol. You've been introduced to this big scary world. You do a lot of confusing and questionable crap and I'm going to talk about one of those times. So my first experience with a crush was when I was in grade nine, like I said, and I just got to this new school with thousands of people and it was just such a crazy experience and there was a, one, this guy in one of my classes, one of, I think it was my religion class, and you know, he had like the flippy skater hair that was really big when I was in high school. If you had, if you were a guy and you had that flippy skater hair, you were like instant, you know, lady boner. So he had like the flippy skater hair and I just, for whatever reason, you know, looking back on it now, I'm just like, like what was it about him? But you know, for whatever reason, I was just smitten 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 so I remember the first really embarrassing moment I ever had with a crush was I so I obviously knew this guy's name he was in my class and I, I actually looked him up in the phone book <laughs> and I found his like his family name his phone number his address <laughs> I don't know why, but I, I told my friends and I was like, yeah, like I found him in the phone book. I know where he lives, like joking around. Like I was never gonna stalk his freaking house. Like I didn't even know why I looked it up, to be honest. So I wasn't gonna be like freaking sitting in his tree with binoculars, you know, like freaking hiding in his closet with a 
camera or anything, but I just, I looked up his name in the phone book, and one of my friends, I mean, bless her, love her to death, but she told him, and she, she was like, insert name here, Kelsey looked you up in the phone book. I don't know why she did, but whatever, it happens, and I was so ashamed, and then a couple weeks later, one of my other friends, came into my class and called him out and said, oh, you know, Kelsey, Kelsey really likes you. Kelsey really likes you in front of the whole class. And the whole class went, oh, and he was all like, yeah, I'm the man. And I remember I, I left the room and I started, I got into a crazy shouting match with my friend in the hallway and everybody could hear me. And um, <laughs> the teacher came out and started yelling and everyone could hear that as well. And she's like, come back inside. And I was like, no, like, I'm not, I'm not going back inside. And she's like, okay, well, you have detention. Don't come back. So everybody witnessed that. And I didn't go back inside. I think I left my bag. I left everything in there. And I probably went and hid in the bathroom stall. It was pretty shameful. It was pretty shameful. And you know, you think when you get older, you're, you know better. You learn, you learn to be more normal. But no, that never happened for me. So when I went to university, I had, I think I had three major crushes in university. One of them had a girlfriend. One of them turned out to be gay, not even kidding. And my gaydar is just, it's impeccable. You know, I can tell these things, but this guy was so ambiguous and he fooled me. That one fooled me, but he turned out to be gay. And then my third one was, um, one of my professors <laughs> and well he wasn't like a full-fledged professor well I guess he was but he was still working on his PhD so he's very young he was in his late 20s he was still working on his PhD so he's one of those kind of like student professors so in my mind I was like oh man that means he's accessible we can date <laughs> so, I don't know I think I was 21 at this point and like I said from 14 to 21 you'd think you would learn better I never did <laughs> so I was in love with this professor and he I was in his class but he clearly didn't know I existed he called me Chelsea he called me Kelly and in my mind I was like well if you put Chelsea and Kelly together it makes my name Kelsey so he knows me but he didn't I had to do a presentation in his class so I had to go up there and give I think it was like a half hour or something presentation on some some play or some novel we were reading because I was a um, an English specialist in school. Holla. That's why I'm um, unemployable. But anyway, that's a, that's a topic for a whole nother video. But yeah, so I was an English specialist. So I was doing a presentation on some play or some novel. And I, I bombed so bad because I'm not good at public speaking. I'm awkward in front of this freaking camera. Imagine me in front of people. No, like it's not pretty. I did such a bad job. I bombed so hard and I was so nervous because like I said, I was already shit at public speaking, but I also had the man that I, you know, pictured my kids with <laughs> sitting in front of me, watching me, scrutinizing me and marking me. So I bombed so bad. I started swearing in Italian and I don't even say, I was like, oh, because I, I lost track of what I was going to say. And I was like, oh, madre di Dio. And I was like, what the fuck? I don't even know how to speak Italian. It was, it was weird. It was really, really weird. And I, he, he failed me. I got a 60, which I mean, isn't a fail, but like at my school, that was just the bare minimum of passing. You needed a 60 to pass. <laughs> whatever and I remember at the end of the year we had to write this um, end of the year essay and he he put it on my desk and it was really thick I guess because it was a long essay and he's just like oh here you go and I was like oh you got such a thick package there for me <laughs> I kid you not. I'm not making this shit up like you couldn't even write this shit the look on his face like he looked like he wanted to leave the country, you know, join witness protection program, go and freaking okay, that's my cat. I gotta let him out of the room. 
one second. Okay, I'm back. Um, but anyway, he looked like he wanted to assume a whole new identity and just hide from me. So after that happened, you know, I was out of his class. I hadn't seen him in a while. I think I started fourth year after that. And you think I would be over it? No, I wasn't. I looked up if he was teaching any classes and where they were the next year and I would go and well I went once okay I wouldn't stalk I went once okay because after that one time that I went there I like I said I self-reflected and I was like whoa back up get off the struggle bus just stop doing this but anyway so I went to his class once and I like there were no windows into the room and I like pressed my ear to the door and I heard his voice and he was so cute you know he was young he had an accent an Irish accent and he had this snaggle tooth and I would just stare up into it every time he talked to me and I was just like oh man my child is gonna have that beautiful snaggle tooth <laughs> anyways I heard his voice and I was like that's him that's him so I went in the lobby of the building and I knew he would be getting out of class soon. So I sat there and I saw him. Can't even believe I'm admitting this shit, you know? To be honest, I can't even believe that I'm putting this on the internet, but <laughs> whatever. So he walked out of the building to, I guess, his next class and it was raining and he had an umbrella and I, I started following him. God knows why. I didn't plan on being seen. I didn't plan on catching up to him. I don't even know why. But I, I straight up started following him and I think like you know when you get that sense you're being watched and you're just like really you know ill at ease. I feel like he, he had that sense because he kept like turning around and at this point I was hiding in bushes, hiding in trash cans, I freaking was like Martin Sheen in Apocalypse Now with fucking camo gear you know up in the trees. It, it got pretty messy, but I'm proud to say, I'm not proud of anything in this vlog, but you know, I'm proud to say that was the very last time I ever <laughs> stalked anyone because I realized how ridiculous it was. Just when girls have crushes, you know, my best friend, she, I remember, this really resonated with me. She, she called me one day and said, uh-oh, Kelsey, I, I have a crush. And I was like, oh, that's great. Like, who is he? Why is it, uh, oh, that's such a great thing. Crushes are fun. And she's like, no, you won't like me when I have a crush. Like pretty much like Bruce Banner hulking out. She turns into this monster. <laughs> bless her, bless her. We talked about this vlog and she's like, yeah, you can, you can mention me. You start reading into the craziest things. You know, you think they're looking at you. You start picturing your life with them. You start picturing what your kids are gonna look like. You know, the wedding dress you're gonna have, where you guys are gonna live together. Things get pretty spooky, like straight up spooky. Spooky. I remember my sister had a, a crush on this guy. And you'll see my sister. She'll be on my channel quite a bit because she is really funny and really smart and she has so much insight and we got a vibe going. So I think that interesting conversations and situations will ensue for sure. So you'll be seeing her pretty soon. But my sister had a crush on this guy and <laughs> One day we were just sitting outside and one of those like dandelion fluffs floated by and you know how you're supposed to make a wish on the dandelion fluff. Well, she caught it and she had this crazed look in her eye and I was like, uh oh Sam, I know what you're wishing for. And she was just like this. <sighs> and it was the most fucked thing I've ever seen. Love you Sam, I know you're watching this but Love you. The advent of cyber stalking is turning us women into like freaking CIA agents. Freaking CIA agents. This is creepy to admit, just like everything in this video, but whatever. I'm going for it. I'm already in deep. There, there ain't no getting out now. <laughs> you give me a guy's first name, give me five minutes on a computer. Five minutes. I will come up with his address, his last name, his job, where he went to school, how much he weighed when he came out of his mother, his blood type, boxers or briefs. It's easy nowadays though, with social media, you can just go on your crush's profile and scroll. Next thing you know, you're 132 weeks deep into his Instagram, like praying to like the Instagram Lord that you don't click anything because 
I did that once. I did that once. I was very, very deep into somebody's, um, I think it was Facebook. And I accidentally clicked like. I kid you not. I was about to throw myself out the window. You know, people had to come talk me down from the ledge because I didn't know how to carry on with my life at that point. <laughs> you see every single girl that comments, you're just clicking like, who is Judy from three desks down? Who is this bitch? He my man. Who, who does she think she is? It's just easy to get even more obsessed because you get to know personal details about their life. You're constantly inundated with photos of them, videos of them. When you have a crush, to leave it behind, I feel like distance is needed. You know, I found with my crushes, the longer that I was away from them or the longer that I didn't see them, the more the crush faded. And I feel like with social media, crushes don't fade because you always see them. You always see what they're up to. You always see personal aspects of their life. So it's almost like you can escape. It's like you're the eye of God. That's freaking scary. Like you're always stuck in that cycle, man. That cycle. I think a lot of girls go through this and I just wanted to talk about it to let you know like you're not alone. We all go through it. It's something inside of us. I think it's like a biological imperative to reproduce. So when you see someone you're attracted to, your mind just loses all rationality and it's like reproduce, propagate the species. I'm going to use that as an explanation to hide my craziness. When you have a crush, you for the most part you guys might not even be compatible. You might not even have that much in common, but because you're so deep in your crush, you fit them, you mold them into the image of this perfect guy in your head. Or, or girl, this video isn't excluding, you know, men with crushes or, you know, lesbians with crushes or gay men with crushes. You mold this person into this perfect image in your mind. You're infatuated with that image of them. You're not really in love for the person that they are. It might not be the case where you're molding them into your perfect person. Maybe they are actually everything that you adore and they are what you think they are. You might have a genuine connection with this person. So if you have an intuition that somebody likes you, then just, just go for it because nowadays I'm speaking in general and I, I don't like to generalize things, but what I've found is a lot of men are more, I guess, timid, you know, and not as brazen. Like they won't approach a woman on the street and ask them out. They they definitely take their time. They're definitely cautious. They want to, I guess, read the signals. They want to make sure that the girl is feeling something for them. Nobody, nobody likes rejection. You know, man, woman, animal, like nobody likes rejection. So I get why they're more cautious, but like, you're not going to have that friggin Prince Charming riding up on his white steed. I'm sorry, that's probably not gonna happen. It's just like the meme. My Prince Charming is lost somewhere on a tortoise, very slow and confused. So just go for it. If you want something, you gotta make it happen. What's the worst that can happen? Ooh, you, you get rejected. You know, rejection builds character. When I was a kid, like, bitch, if I didn't get the toy I was crying for, that made me independent. That made me independent being told no. And if they don't reject you, frig man, like, you begged your crush. Minstrels will sing of your tales. Bards will sing of your tales, you know, if you if you hook your crush, because that is just a situation that is unheard of, in my opinion. So, <laughs> just go for it, man. Just go for it. Make every everything a positive experience. So that's it for my video today. I know it was definitely a departure from my last video. Um, but I, I still hope you enjoyed it and uh, like I said, please leave comments down below because a lot of those comments will spark conversation and if you want me to talk about something in my next video, if there's something on your mind that you want me to discuss, please tell me because I'm always looking for new topics, I'm always in the market for new conversations. I, I want to find my inspiration from you guys and it'll, it'll facilitate that conversation for sure. Once again, thank you so much for watching, it means the world to me, like I said my last video got a really good response and I am hoping that's a trend I'm hoping that all my videos get a pretty good reception because 
I want to I want to reach as many people as possible and I want to put a smile on people's faces that's all I want Ooh, I look like Casper the unfriendly hoe in this video <laughs> sorry I'm so pale so like comment subscribe all that good stuff I should post I'm hoping to post once a week. I don't know a day yet. I'm thinking Thursdays, but it might be before that, might be after that. If I get one video a week out, then that'll be a personal goal for me. So I'm hoping to aim for that. So thanks so much for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.